Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. And uh, to today's broadcast is going to be, well, I would have to say it's going to be an eye-opener. And at the same time, it's going to be controversial, no doubt. Um, this is kind of going to spearhead the way for many, many, many more topics that we'll be speaking on. I don't know how many of those we'll be able to do here on Patreon, but at least... Um, we'll try to place a lot of these here, uh, but we're talking about global dominance, new world order, new coming age. Uh, how else would I describe this? It's very difficult to even think about how to describe this particular uh, broadcast. But as we're watching things that are happening, uh, especially over in Israel, globally, etc., um, and all the intel that has been shared with me uh, just in the last four years, I clearly recognize the advent of a global change taking place right before our, our eyes. But it's not going to be a change that we want to see. It is definitely going to be a very demonic change. Um, and so with that, we're going to be getting into this. Uh, I just happen to have this article open on the screen more for uh, a prop for you to see that the reptilian humanoids that once inhabited the earth, uh, ancient reptilians, the unanswered mystery of the 7,000 year old you abide lizard men. Um, that's the title of that on this uh, article here, ancientorigins.net, ancient Greece, particularly. Uh, we're speaking about there, uh, but it's not just looking at this reptilian idea or agenda. I mean, let's face it, Jesus says in Matthew uh, 23, um, uh, you know, he says one place about the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil. Another place he says in there that uh, he calls them serpents and vipers. Uh, clearly identifying them somehow genetically connected to possibly a reptilian ancestry. Now, it doesn't mean that all Jews are connected in that regards, but he specifically was, was speaking about uh, the Pharisees uh, uh, in particular there. I mean, because let's face it, Jesus came to his own, his own received him not. Uh, there's so much that could be said about these things on so many levels. So there's some things I'm going to talk to you about today, including, let's see if I got it right here. This here is the transcript of uh, one of the uh, History Channel shows there. And this one here is where we get uh, Ariel, uh, Rabbi Ariel Sadok. And maybe I'll give you an image there just so we know who we're talking about that. Um, and... Uh, just and I have to put the rabbi part in order for it to bring it up who he is. This is him right here. Uh, let me just see if we get an image just to catch an image here of him. Uh, and here he is even on the History Channel right there, Rabbi Ariel Bar Tzedak. Uh, in Judaism, he's not controversial. But, of course, the more that Christians begin to look at uh, him, the more controversial things become. Uh, you're going to see some quotations where, that are made of him uh, in the History Channel there. And it's very disturbing. Uh, they, he, he actually says that the serpents are uh, the seraphim, uh, the, or the reptilians are the seraphim, and that they live in inner earth. So I'm actually going to be quoting a lot from that article, or from that uh, particular history broadcast on the printed version that I see there. But I wanted to share too with you this right here. I just, just as I was doing the research on these different things there, I came across this video here uh, from Umran TV, the English version here. Uh, How could Israel rule the world and take over USA and China? Uh, I think it's kind of interesting some of the things that this, uh, this Muslim... Uh, uh, cleric says. So I want to play a clip of that for you just so you can hear that as well. So let's listen in. Uh, rule the world. Uh, that is uh, take over the US. Uh, even China is the second largest uh, economy now in the world. It is the child who wants to rule the world. 
the false messiah. And he's taking the Jews for a ride. And it's the last ride on which they ever go. Most of them, unfortunately, have eyes and yet cannot see. So just like most Muslims as well, they have eyes and yet cannot see. He wants to rule the world. And he wants to rule the world and then hand over that rule to the Jews, meaning to the state of Israel, not to those Jews who oppose Israel. The most important part of his plan. I, I want you to notice some of the things that he says. I, I actually am amazed at uh, his accuracy and what he says. But he's talking about the Antichrist, uh, the false messiah. I guess that's the term. I, I can't quite hear how he pronounces that word there, but uh, he's speaking about that. And uh, But then he talks about that the basically the Antichrist wants to take over the world and then hand it over to the Jews. And he said, but he doesn't want to hand it over to those Jews that oppose basically what's happening in Israel, but rather handing it over to uh, those Jews that are, well, like we see the, the problem going on in Israel right now. It is a, a battle for power. And most of the Jewish people in Israel are totally against what uh, Netanyahu's government is doing right now. So I wanted to just clarify that. Let's listen a little bit more. It was disclosed to us when Allah sent down the last revelation. Nabi Muhammad was... Now, that last revelation uh, is talking about the Jews going to rule the world. Let me see if I can find the part where he speaks about that. Riba. And in riba, one component of riba, the, first, the second one is the banking system. But the first one is the monetary system. What is money? And they have already achieved it. Yes. All that now remains is to get rid of all of these national currencies. And India is leading the pack. India. India demonetized the 1,000 Indian rupee and the 500 Indian rupee note. Was it last year? and caused so much destruction in India, so much trouble. The European Union is demonetizing the 500 euro note, or maybe they've already demonetized it. And around the world now, they're demonetizing the big notes. And uh, if you travel by air sometimes, and you want to buy a bottle of water, you can't, pay with, you can't buy it with money. No. No cash. <laughs> We're moving away. We're moving away from these currencies to what is called and proclaimed as a cashless world. And they call that progress. They call that progress. But if you were faithful to the truth which came in the Quran, you would understand that the, the rope is tightening around your neck. And they will soon come with one universal currency for all of mankind. Mm -hmm. Of course, it will be electronic. And we controlled by one central bank. So goodbye to state sovereignty. <laughs> eh? Goodbye to state sovereignty. Which is why they are inundating Europe with refugees today. That's why they are inundating Europe with millions of refugees today. Because state sovereignty has to go. Nationalism has to go. It is one world society coming. And one world government. And one currency. And that one currency for all of mankind is slavery for us. So it's not a question of how are they going to establish their rule over the world. They have already done it while the scholars of Islam were sleeping. You have to excuse my anger. Oh yes, those of you who know me would know that I have been even here in Malaysia for 20, 25 years now. So if I show some anger, you have to excuse me. All right, so there, and uh, and of course, I do not support uh, the Quran, nor do I support the the Muslim religion. But the wisdom of that man 
is quite astounding and he is exactly on point. I've known this. I've told you that they're going to do away with it. Everybody knows that they're going to do away with the currency system. But the thing is, as he points out, it's going to be controlled by one bank. Now, what bank is that going to be? Think about it. Just think about it. Everything is taking place. You know, what's interesting, my wife brings up this article, and I'll see if I can find it if I have it on my screen here. I don't think I do. But the Jerusalem Post uh, had wrote an article about me two years ago. And um, in that article, uh, they talk about how that I said that uh, Israel would become a theocracy and that that would mean the beheading for Christians. And the odd thing is, the, the article was accurate uh, as far as that goes, right? Uh, I did talk about those things, and yes, they did become a theocracy. The only next step is, is when they implement the Noahide laws globally, then there will be the beheading. And uh, sadly enough, that is coming. Um, you know, so there they say right here on there uh, that uh, uh, claiming fluency in Hebrew, he uses the Bible to assert that Israel today seeks to establish a theocratic state in which Christians will be beheaded. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yes, yes, they will be. And that's coming. All right. Now, let's go, though, to the transcript of one of the History Channel's uh, arguments here. I want to first, I'm going to read from the bottom here, but then I'm going to back up and share with you some more of the information in this transcript. Uh, could Admiral Byrd's story uh, point to a profound connection between the ancient traditions of strange beings living inside the Earth and the modern-day UFO phenomena? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes and believe we may be fast approaching a time when we will find ourselves face-to-face -face with the beings of inner Earth. All right. Now, I want the, I'm reading all this for, for a reason. There's a very, very, very uh, disturbing information from the intel that I have been getting now for quite some time about these things coming. And this is the narrator on the History Channel saying these things. According to the teachings of the Kabbalah, uh, on this, uh, this date, which marks the beginning of the seventh millennium on the Judaic calendar, humankind will be introduced to a profound new reality, according to the Zohar, at the beginning of the seventh millennium, uh, in the gates of wisdom will open on earth. That seems like a long way off. However, the Zohar tells us that there will be Preliminary stages of the opening of this wisdom. Those stages, the Kabbalah teaches, began around 1840. That's the beginning of the Industrial Revolution when suddenly humankind are taking control of nature. After that, we enter into the Technological Revolution of the 1950s, the invention of the computer, the transistor, and other technologies like that now are moving into a nanotechnology, the artificial intelligence era. These are all believed to be signs that we are ultimately moving into this new era when immense wellsprings of wisdom will open up. Now, Burns points out, at this point, we will be an age of enlightenment that will come upon the planet and come upon the life of this planet. Now, isn't this fascinating that the three uh, Adamic religions all talk about the same thing? Christianity is the second coming and the rapture. Um, uh, the Islam and the 12th Imam. And in Jerusalem is the Messiah who will come and there will be a whole new life on this planet. Now, Rabbi Ariel Tzedek, the guy I show you over right here. Okay. Whoops, sorry. Oop, I, sh I actually cut the, cut the thing off. Sorry about that. Uh, he says, when it comes time for the Messiah to come, the Messiah will come from this, will, excuse me, will not, notice that, will not, here you go, not come from the skies, but rather the Messiah and his army will come from inner earth. Wow, Jesus comes on the, on the clouds. But Judaism, they get it from the inner earth. But rather the Messiah and his army will come from inner earth. And there is a Midrashic legend that states in the world to come, we will have first contact with those races in inner earth. That's Rabbi Tzadok. Okay, now let me just show you some crazy things that they say in here. But the but the problem is there's so much of this is so true. Um, you know there are inner earth beings, and they talk about uh, you know seven seven earths uh, things like that. Um, and we know from CERN 
in other dimensions, there are other Earths just like this. Diff people living on it, civilizations, everything. And they say that it's only a different time period. All right, here, here we go, Rabbi Tzedek again. When, when, when he was concealed in the cave, he received a tremendous amount of profound sacred wisdom, secrets that were revealed to him uh, in the cave by none less than the immortal prophet himself, Elijah. Now, he's actually talking about Rabbi Yochai, and this is where it is believed that uh, the, uh, the, the, the teachings of Kabbalah come from, uh, etc. And of course, where the Zohar, which I don't know if you can see this on my shelf back here, but I have the entire volume of the Zohar here as well. Uh, and I do that for being able to research just to see what's actually taught and believed. Right. So anyway, Daniel Matt says, according to the Jewish tradition, Elijah never dies. So he appears and he enlightens people. He helps people who are in trouble. Sadok says, so Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai communed with Elijah. He received secrets of the universe. Uh, the narrator says, Rabbi uh, Bar Yochai understood the teachings he received from his immortal messenger to be the great importance, but also felt that he should only be shared with a trusted few and yet revealed uh, and not yet revealed to the public. So Sadok says, he came out of the cave, and after the Romans forgot about him, he gathered together his students and taught them the secrets and were revealed to him, that were revealed to him in the cave, which later becomes the, the, the book there. Uh, let's drop down a little bit, though. All the teachings of the Kabbalah, many believed uh, the most profound comes from passages found in the Zohar, one that says there are seven earths. That's where they talk about that. Uh, Childer says, when you look at the Kabbalah text, they're talking about there being six other earths besides the one we're on. They are not just some allegory uh, or talking about, you know, seven continents or something like that. Well, you have to ask yourself, is it possible that these are actual other planets uh, and they are inhabited? Like I've said, you know, our secret space program, they know of at least three other Earths that are inhabited in other dimensions parallel to our own. Uh, is it that? I know there's going to be arguments in here about uh, being that there are uh, different levels within inside the Earth. That's what Zohar uh, claims to be there. Sadok says one of the most profound teachings of the oral Torah tradition is that we human beings are not the only intelligent species indigenous to our earth, and within this earth live other types of entities. You know, the reason I'm bringing these things out, friends, is because right now the blindness of the Christian community that is just supporting Prime Minister Netanyahu unquestioned, unchecked, unchallenged, um, are setting up a beast kingdom. And I know there are ministers that claim, oh, we, we, we asked about the seven Noahide laws and they assure us that that's not going to be the case and it's only the right-wing hardliners that, uh, in Israel that want the seven Noahide laws. They're passing a lot of laws in Israel right now because of the right-wing hardliners that are doing this. And I agree, it is a very small minority. But unfortunately, it's a very small minority that's been ruling this entire earth all along. And like that uh, Muslim cleric said, the takeover of the monetary system had been done long, long time ago by Israel. Not the state of Israel, as we would know. But you kind of gather where I'm going with that one, right? Uh, the International Monetary Fund, the banking systems globally, everywhere has long been controlled. Now they're going to that one world where it's no longer a sovereignty of your own monetary system in your own country. But yet now uh, everybody is going to be, as, as I shared with you the other day from the, uh, the economic part of these things here, they're going to nationalize the banks. They're going to uh, take in all of their assets. Basically, they're going to say, you can't pay back your debt, so we're going to take over everything you own. It's a globalist takeover. <laughs> Boy, that ought to give you some eyes to think about, right? Uh, this guy here says, of course, the motion of a hollow earth is absurd. The earth is not hollow. However, if you change the word hollow to inner, then I even have to say there could be an argument made that some someone may be here underneath the surface of the earth. 
because it is a geological fact that there are gigantic chambers underneath the Earth's crust, some of which even contain water that are larger than the world's ocean. So you know you have to wonder if it's all possible that somebody is down there. And what if these entities have been here for thousands of years? Uh, this man Sokolas says here, Sadoc goes on to say, it is believed and taught that we have had civilization upon our earth for ten, taught that we have had civilization upon our earth for tens of thousands of years, possibly much longer, prior to Adam spoken of in the Bible. And Sadoc is a rabbi. The narrator says, according to the Kabbalah teaching, some of the beings that inhabit inner earth lived on the surface long before the time of humans, and Kabbalah is not the only ancient tradition that speaks of pre-human civilization. Now, with that being stated there, let's see, let me find what I wanted to share with you. I hope I still have it. Um, hmm. Ooh. The art, uh, maybe, let's see. This is going to be a tough one here. The Songdong, uh, and I'm, I think, Songdong Cave, uh, this cave right here, by the way, uh, which they're not showing it as of yet, but they will here in just a moment here. This cave that was discovered over in, um, I think it was, was it Vietnam? I'm not sure exactly now which country that is out there in the, in the Far East, but it's one, considered to be one of the world's largest caves. And, but uh, I actually had found evidence of the, this cave here that was discovered, the Hang Song Dung. Uh, and they talked about that the military, and, uh, and like I said, i got to find it somewhere, that when they were there during the war, that there were lizard-like humanoids that were coming out of this cave. Um, there are many, many, many different um, uh, sightings and sayings about this on a global scale. And so that's something to be uh, to think about as well, to put it into perspective. Uh, and I don't know, maybe it was actually in this article here where they brought up that Sungdung cave there, but I don't recall now. I thought I had it um, saved in here, but I guess I did not. I'll have to do that in a different video there. But the point being is, is that even uh, Tzedak had said in one video that he made there that if you see a reptilian, a, I think he said a yellowish reptilian hand reaching out, don't be afraid of it. He actually refers to them as uh, seraphim. And I think that's even in some of these uh, sayings here. Let's just see um, this one here. Go, let me back up to Burns. This So history and archaeology themselves point to life forms on this planet long before human beings. The question is, where are they from? I believe we've been visited by lots of extraterrestrial races. Some took, some didn't. Some stayed, some left. Some are on the land. Some are underwater. We're, we're, we're a colony, as they write there. Uh, and you have to understand, I don't say that I support all these ideologies that they're saying. I really believe we're dealing with fallen angels and, uh, and we're dealing with demonic entities that have been trying to control humankind ever since God created Adam and Eve. Uh, so whether or not we can go back further and things like that, uh, that's you know still up for debate. But uh, the issue is is that I, I'm looking at what's coming next because so many people are looking for a millennial reign here on Earth, and I believe that you're about to get a millennial reign, but it's not the one you're anticipating. It's going to be a theocracy. It's going to be a one-world government, and it's going to be headed by entities. Like that imam said, the Antichrist is going to be the one that sets it up. So that's why I caution uh, our brothers and sisters that just pour the money and support Israel like if it's no big deal. And those teachers that are supporting Israel like this, that are leading the church into clearly a, a, uh, a horrible, a horrible Antichrist system that you don't want to find yourself supporting something like that. It's horrible, right? But he goes on, the narrator says, could it be that long before the time of modern humans, other intelligent species, possibly even other planets, populated the Earth? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes and point to the teachings of the Kabbalah for evidence that some of these species that predated humans 
also coexisted with them. One example can be found in the Bible's book of Genesis and the creation described the Garden of Eden as the serpent. Now, Rabbi Sedak says here, the serpent not only spoke but stood erect, had arms and legs and clearly intelligence and were describing a pre-Adamic uh, uh, earth-based reptilian and this we find echoed in legends and teachings from cultures around the world. So one of the great pre-Adamic civilizations clearly was a reptilian humanoid, and these are referred to as seraphim. <laughs> now that make you a little bit nervous to think about his theology, right? Um, you know, so you have to really do some scratching your head when it comes to that. Now, granted, animals were created before the humans were. So, yes, the serpent or the reptilians were definitely here before humans. So, in some, some regard, we could argue that as a possibility uh, if the serpent was not. Because, I mean, granted, if God curses him to go on his belly for what he did, he couldn't have been on his belly to start with. And clearly, he did have the ability to communicate in the language that Adam and Eve spoke in at that time. Uh, so maybe there is some truth to that. But the issue is, though, is a pre-Adamic race? Well, in that case, yes. I mean, it depends on how long the reptilians were here before Adam and Eve were actually created on the earth. And I, we don't know the answer to that. Was that 100 years, uh, 200 years, 1,000 years? Nobody really knows that answer. But it goes on here, states here, Burns says it could be... Uh, uh, Byron's, I should say, it could well, it could well be that there was a whole evolving race of reptilians. Call them seraphim. Call them anything you want to. They basically were, uh, in their own way, civilizing, civilizing the planet, organizing life on this planet. And then human beings came to this planet, and they realized we couldn't live together, and they went underground. Um, a, a narrator says, can ancient stories of other intelligent species sharing this planet with humans and them migrating to the subterranean realms be true? As far as ancient astronaut theorists are concerned, the evidence can be found in numerous ancient traditions that describe not only uh, underground worlds, but also the many strange beings that reside within them. Uh, for centuries, the Jewish mystical text called the Zohar has been a source of sacred teachings of the uh, esoteric wisdom, but the idea that there are inhabited realms within the earth is not exclusive to the Zohar alone. This concept can also be found in the ancient texts from the numerous cultures around the world, like the Vishnu Purana of India, written roughly 2,000 years ago. The Vishnu Purana describes the multiple domains that exist deep underground. Childers goes on to say, this is very similar to the story of the Tuha uh, Didanan, the ancient Irish text talking about Tuath and Didanan as arriving in shadowy airships. Uh, coming from the sky, they enveloped in the mist, they had all kinds of tremendous technology, and they were ru the rulers, allegedly, of Ireland for quite a long time until modern Irish came to Ireland, and they made a pact with the Tuath Didanan, ah, can't say it, the uh, de uh, de de and the Tuath and de de according to the legend, go underground in Ireland and now are living in the the underground world. Now Amir Hassin, which I believe is a uh, he's either Arabic or Jewish. You've got uh, you've got you know the similar kind of story with the Sumerian text. The Anunnaki literally are the are the sky gods. But then as you get into the later versions of the story, one of them. Uh, Inanan goes into the netherworld. Uh, and so you have these gods that start up the sky, but they then come down not just to earth, but into the earth. And you see this across different cultures. So, I mean, there's all kinds of crazy things in here that they're talking about, right? But, I mean, how crazy is it? I mean, think about it. As I did the teaching on the uh, fallen angels, they were imprisoned in the inner earth. Uh, or underground in Antarctica, is, I believe, is where that actually took place at. So could it be that that's why they end up in that subterranean area? Um, I know that one time when I was uh, speaking to uh, these, one of the sources that I have in Washington there, they said according to the 
classified version of the Mayan documents that there was a war on Earth. It was obvious that war was pre-Andalusian uh, destruction, and the giants, which would be the Nephilim, fought against the uh, the draconians that had came to this Earth uh, to try to to dominate the Earth, and they overcame them and they imprisoned them in the inner Earth there. Now. Could that be, uh, you know, because again, I said the Nephilim, and we know the Nephilim are the children of the fallen ones. So who were the Draconians in that came in, or the Reptilians? Were, was that, in other words, did the, uh, were the fallen angels a different race? Uh, you know, they say that there are Venetians within the inner earth, and the Venetians look more human-like. Uh, we know that reptilians have the ability to shape shift, at least that's what I've been told, and able to appear to look as if they were human. Uh, one of the ancient Egyptian documents says about the, the book of Enoch there, or the writings of the story of Enoch and what happened, that, uh, that they actually made themselves appear as if they were their husbands, and that's why the women fell for them and ended up having children by them. All kinds of crazy things that are out there. I mean, really, it can make your head swim, right? Sadok says, it is known that there are indigenous to, uh, indi there are indigenous to the domains of inner earth, and these... Uh, jinn are said to have bodies only of fire and air, and we might think, well, they are spiritual, but other traditions teach that's not so. Like human beings, it is said they eat, they drink, they sexually procreate, and they die, and they can be invisible. Uh, now, the jinn, that is part of the Arabic tradition. That is like a ghost or a genie out of the bottle is where we get that from. And they do believe that they can either be good or bad, and they can either do good or bad things, etc., things like that. Um, the narrator goes on to say, while many traditions talk of human-like beings inhabiting Earth's inner realms, the Zohar teaches that all kinds of entities reside below the surface, and some are even hybrids of different creatures. And Sadok says, the Zohar tells us there are hybrid beings who live there, some of whom are half human, half animal. There are beings that have, that have the bodies of human beings with the heads of lions and the heads of bulls, and the souls very, sounds very familiar to us from the ancient mythologies and legends. Now, oddly enough, with that being said, I know that um, there is very, very uh, Dulce, New Mexico, working with reptilian entities, I've been told that they do those types of experiments even to this day. They will attach humans, say, for example, to animal bodies or vice versa, things like that. And I've been told to some success, even 90% of neurological function is restored as a result. That is alarming and such a tragic thing to hear. And if you think about it, the scripture, or not the scripture, I should say, I think it's in the book of Enoch, uh, states that actually they sinned against the animals. Could that be what they were talking about, where they make these human hybrid forms that did not really exist? Of course, then again, you've got uh, also, too, in some of these uh, ancient writings and stuff that the serpent, uh, Yaldabaoth himself is what he's called, that he actually is a serpent with a lion's head. I mean, talk about some weird type of creatures out there. Uh, but, you know, they make this, you know, here's another one right here that Sadok says, according to the ancient teachings in inner earth, there are, there do live real dragons spoken of in the book of Job, the phoenix, which burns itself to ashes and in its nest and then resurrects itself just as the book of Job teaches also live in inner earth. And it is taught that unicorns, real ones are alive today in inner earth, you know. So here, here's where my trouble comes in. I have to just tell you, all right? And we'll go back down to where, say, Doc, I'll skip over some of this here for you. But um, when he says here, when it comes time for the Mashiach or the Messiah to come, the Messiah will not come from the skies, but rather the Messiah and his army will come from inner earth. And there is a Midrashic legend that states in the world to come, we will have first contact with those races in inner earth earth. That is alarming to me because that tells me that right now, and this is something that has been shared with me through Intel for quite some time, that in fact the one entity that has came up that's been speaking on behalf of Ra the sun god that is claiming to be coming back uh, to enlighten the world about the religions of the world and what's really going on is an under ocean alien entity. 
Um, you know, I shared a, a picture one time, wasn't an actual real picture. I, in fact, I, I should have made that more clear at the time, but uh, it was for a reference point because I was, it was described to me what they look like because uh, they, they have gills on their face. They can breathe underwater or out of the water. But this alien entity has been in communication with our government. Uh, they have been discussing uh, the religious aspects, the death, and, uh, res the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they're waiting for the world to come to such a cataclysmic uh, event. And this is what's going to help Israel to gain that world dominance and globalization is because, one, they're going to first go bring all these wars about, cause all this massive destruction on a global scale. So there are going to be multiple fronts that will break out everywhere in the world. Uh, Germany will probably be one of the next ones. Uh, Taiwan, the United States will get hit as well. Uh, in fact, one of the messages that I haven't quite been able to decipher is that because of the threat of China, uh, Intel uh, executives have moved their families inland, not underground, but inland. And so there's a lot of speculation of what does that really mean. Uh, with that being stated, I, I do want to say, say to you that, you know, they're talking about the help comes from inner earth. But going back to, let me, let me back up. I don't want to get ahead of myself too much here. When we are looking at the global wars, and then they're talking about the, the different viruses that are in the permafrost that are coming alive as a due to the melting of the, of the, of the uh, ice and things, that worse things are going to come upon the earth that we just can't control. I've been told that they already were planning to release something that would be catastrophic. And they've already got the antidote for it. You have to remember, if, if ancient civilizations lived long before Adam, they know about those pre-Ice Age, you might want to call it, uh, as actually as these are viruses that existed during the times of Noah, uh, that they know how to control. They knew how to control them then. So they already, they already have the antidote for it. They have that. They have, like I said, the global... Uh, wars are going to have all the cataclysmic events of the coming of Planet X, which is the, you know, the uh, the the draconian planet, and um, you know. But if Sadok is correct, though, the their their help is going to come from inner Earth, and uh, it, uh, oddly enough, their Messiah comes not from the skies, but from inner Earth. Remember the scripture says Satan is loosed from the bottomless pit, goes up upon the earth to deceive the world. All right. Do you guys remember that? I mean, let's come on. All right. Let's take a look. See, that's the reason. Boy, I'll tell you what. This is what makes things so troubling for me. All right. Uh, deceive the nations. Let me just put that in there. Do you see um, that's what Satan does? Revelation 20. But see, the thing is, is they've gotten you to believe false doctrines to where you put this off in some future event, not knowing it's going to happen right before your eyes. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and he shall go out and deceive the nations which are on the four quarters of the earth and Gog and Magog to gather them together the battle of the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Satan's going to come from inner earth. See, he shall go out. He's, he's going to be loosed out of his prison. Remember, he's put in the bottomless pit. And he's going to be loosed from there to deceive the nations, a new world order, all right? Think about it, friends. I mean, this is not what you think. And that's why they try to control the interpretation of Scripture and what it says and what it means. And, and that's why they try to make you believe the way they want you to believe so that you will accept the false messiah. And Israel's already told you their Messiah comes from inner earth. Jesus don't come from inner earth, friends. He doesn't come from there. 
If anything, we know the scripture says that when he died on the cross, he did go to inner earth and he preached those souls that were imprisoned. Remember that? That's what he did. They were imprisoned. Maybe let's see if we can pull that up as well. Um, all right, so I was able to find that. It's actually in 1 Peter 3.19. And let me back up to verse 17. For it's better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So we know that he went then and preached those, law, those souls that were imprisoned. So, and if he goes, and most people believe that they were imprisoned inside the inner earth there somewhere, then what makes us think that the true Messiah is going to come from there? Satan's put into a bottomless pit. Is that another dimension? I, I don't really know the answer. I have speculated that it could be, but nonetheless, it's still, it's in an area where nothing good seems to come out of it, but yet it is believed that this is where the Messiah is going to come from. So the new world order is definitely going to be very demonic. And yet we're being led to believe that it's going to be very godly. Why do you think they're going to put to death Christians under the Noahide laws? Think about it. I'm Steve Benoon. I, I trust somehow that all this is a blessing for you, uh, that in some way that it'll help you open your eyes, etc. I want to thank you on Patreon for supporting the work we do. Also, too, my wife put out an amazing video on... Um, on her channel um, on Odyssey Israeli News Live. I'll leave a link for you in the description so you can go to that to watch that as well. You have a blessed day and thank you for your support.